Good morning. Uh, let's let's find duplicate files so we can delete them. So I have a backup server, and on there are many photos and videos from various Android phones and digital cameras, spanning back 20 years or so. In the past, when I wanted to copy photos from a camera to my computer, I'd copy the entire contents of the memory card to a machine. I did this because I didn't want to take the time to figure out what I've already copied off, or perhaps I was copying to a new computer and frankly had no easy way to figure out what may exist on another machine. And honestly, I didn't want to delete anything from the SD card if it wasn't yet full, just so I ended up copying all the same stuff again. Um, this means I've got multiple copies of many photos and videos, and I'd like to clean that up. I'd like to gain some confidence that I have what I want and have only one copy. At least, you know, on a single hard drive. So let's look at file indexing script I wrote. Well, that was a fumble. So let's look at a file indexing script I wrote and use it to identify duplicates that can be deleted. The uh, script is written in Python 3 and we store file information in a SQLite database. So here we go. Over here you can see the schema. Very simple. Files table, an ID as the primary key for the row. And then we store the full path of the file. The sh calculated SHA-1 of the file contents, the byte length on disk, um, when the file was created and modified on disk in the file system. And then of course two indexes so we can see whether, you know, and one index on path, so we can easily and quickly find if a file was already indexed. And then an index on the SHA-1 sum, so we can find multiple, you know, whether there's more than one file with the same SHA hash. Here's the script, it's very simple. We use Python's built-in hash lib and built-in SQLite 3 support, take a path, on the command line that we want to do indexing for. I set up SQLite 3 to um, return each row as a dictionary. So basically we have named um, fields in the returned row. Otherwise it would just be row bracket 0 to get the first field from the query, or row bracket 1 to get the second field that you've selected in the query. It's a little not very friendly to humans, so that's why I'm using a, a dictionary factory. And this is all in the Python 3 documentation, so it's pretty easy to find this, or at least this part is. And this is a SHA-1 sum calculation script that I found on Stack Overflow. Oh, I just wanted to keep it all in Python. And this is just a simple um, yielding function to loop over um, all files within a folder tree. So this walks a folder for all the files in there and then yields to the um, thing that's calling this iterator. It basically returns an iterator so it can work with a for loop. I hope I'm using the right terminology. It's been a while since I've really looked into Python iterators, and I think I found this example on Stack Overflow too, so quite helpful. Um, so basically we loop over all the files. File path will be the you know current file we've arrived at. Uh, this is some old, old code. We'll address this later. Then we um, get the file stat info. Um, if you don't know about stat, it basically gives you modified time, size of the file in bytes, file creation time, and some other things. So look up Python's OS, Python OS module stat function if you want to learn more. Pretty much every language has a variant of that, or an equivalent of that. It's a very common operation when you're dealing with files from code. And this is the gist of what we do. Um, we get the file stat info, look up the file in our files table in our SQLite database. If it's found, 
we'll just do a simple comparison of like um, the file's byte size, when it was created and modified. And if those are the same, like all three of those are the same, we'll just assume that the file hasn't changed on disk. So we don't recalculate the file hash unnecessarily. Um, you can take that out if you want, surely. But, um, and if the file's not found in our files table, we will calculate the SHA-1 hash of the file and then add it to the files table. And that's basically what we're doing here. We're selecting a couple fields so we can do the comparison. Um, let's see, getting the, f uh, yeah, so we've, we have a single file path. We're going to see if it's in the database. If it is, we're going to compare these things, creation, modification, and you know, byte length values, and skip it if it's already been indexed. If those don't match, I'm right now I'm just going to print a little message that says the details changed. Maybe we should update the files row. Okay, and then this else on 72 is if we did not find a row in the database with that file path at all. And this is where we calculate the sum. And we store it in here. We've got the SHA hash that we just calculated here. The path, creation, modification, and byte length values. And we store it and we commit it to the database. That's pretty much it. So let me show you what setup does. Setup really just removes the existing SQLite 3 database that I may have just for testing. Creates a new one and uh, you know, initialize it using the schema that we showed the first part, where it just basically just creates a files table. So that way we can easily get back to square one. And then index, our index bash script just does Python 3 index files with this path. And right now I am indexing the videos for my YouTube channel. So let's see what happens there. All right. We found quite a few files. Let's see. And I do have some duplicates in here, which is why I chose this folder. Um, I in intentionally have duplicates because some things I just didn't want to um, get rid of. All right, so here we are there. Let's open this up. Show tables in SQLite. We got the files table. Show the schema for files, basically the same as the schema.txt. And then if I select star from files, we have this. So we have the hash in here. We have the byte length, I think that's the next field. And then we have two timestamps for creation and modification. And of course, the auto incrementing primary key and the full path of the file. Right now, I had this set to only index MKV files. We, I mean, I'm going to change that when I go to actually index my backup server because I want it to catch photos and videos. Honestly, I think I'm going to change it to use stat and index any file that's over, I don't know, 100K. That way I can easily find duplicates. Most images, I think, are going to be 500k or more. So maybe may end up starting there. Um, all right, so we have this schema. We have path and SHA-1. So let's craft a query where we find uh, duplicate SHA values. There's a couple ways we could do this. We could um, select from files, group on SHA, and do a having clause where the count is greater than one. That's probably what I'll end up doing. And it's been a while since I've written this type of query, but we will figure it out. I don't know whether I can 
do that, but we will see. Oh, okay. Um, given that, now I can... There should only be... Yeah, there should only be a couple, really. Um, we'll do path from files where SHA-1 in that and see what happens there. Oh, I should do the show the count here just so we can be comfortable that Okay. <laughs> Looks like there's four copies of this one. That's funny. Two copies, three copies, two copies. Okay, that makes sense. So that's kind of the numbers we should see. And then we'll go back to the path where there's a SHA that is known to be uh, existing multiple times in the database. All right, so this makes sense. This is the pre-release version of Ripples, and then I copied it over to the released folder. Same for the first video. And it looks like, yeah, old releases. Okay, so I had some adjustments. Guess I didn't actually adjust anything in that one. I made a backup. Oh, there's the original file from my simple screen recorder. I think I just copied that file into pre-release when you know I was about to adjust audio levels. Same for backup. There's video three, which is now called Code Cleanup. Yeah, so it seems to be working. Um, I think that's good enough for now. I believe we're 11 minutes in, 12 minutes in. So that's good. What I'm going to do is tweak this, and then we'll do, what was the value down here? Um, ST size greater than, this is bytes, so I wanted to do, or I'll just do this. Skipping small file, file path, let's go ahead, switch terminals, and yep, skipping some PNG logos, cool, already indexed, pretty much, okay, looks like this one is, logo 3 is more than 100k, um, interesting, cool, it seems to work, alrighty. Thanks for watching. Now I'm going to hopefully adapt this and run it against nearly three terabytes of backup files. It's going to be fun. Take care.